really quick demonstration video here. We have a customer that's got their blue network in Azure, hub, spoke, Azure Firewall, Express Route Gateway that connects them down to their data center. They have a requirement to connect to a third party shown in red here. That third party also wants to use Express Route. We know Express Route is typically used for connecting to your network under your trust boundary. In this case, red to blue gives us some security considerations. And there was two main ones here. Number one is what if this third party, when they connect via BGP to this express route circuit, advertise in an incorrect range by mistake? Maybe they advertise in a range that clashes with blue. So there's a risk there. And also when we advertise our blue ranges to red, do we want to advertise every single one of our internal ranges like we advertise to our internal DC? Is there a way to optimize this design? Well, the answer is yes, but there's one important factor here. In this requirement, the customer in blue only needed to initiate connections out to red and contact a service within red. So in this diagram, there's a IP address 1.2.3.4, which is owned by the red company. They're advertised in that range 1.2.3.0/24 in this example over to the blue and the blue only ever initiates and pulls data down red never initiates traffic into blue the optimized design looks like this so we leave blue as it is we create a separate hub virtual network for red which introduces two points of control for us so the first one is as we know in Azure, an express route gateway will only advertise to the express route circuit its local hub address space and any connected spokes with user remote gateway turned on. In this diagram here, only the red address space 10.10.0.0 slash 16 is going to get advertised to red. And that's because we're not using remote gateway on this peer. And secondly, if the red organization here were to advertise in an erroneous route, for example, if they advertised in 10.167, which would overlap with blue here, that's only going to get as far as this red environment here. It's not going to leak across the peer in. If you're familiar with Azure networking, you'll realize that there's a, an additional catch here, which is these designs wouldn't work by default, right? These multi hop peer in with express route. So what's happening here? Well, because we only ever initiate the traffic from blue, we can leverage the fact that Azure Firewall is in the middle here, and Azure Firewall is going to source and the traffic because it's destined to a public IP. Even if it was destined to a private IP, we could make Azure Firewall snap the traffic if we modified the private traffic prefixes for SNAT. So in this diagram, traffic is going to come from the virtual machine here. Virtual machine's got a default route pointing traffic to the internal firewall, which normally gets it to on-prem, et cetera. But then we're gonna have a, a UDR on the Azure Firewall subnet, which says to get to my public IP here, go across this peer in to our boundary third-party firewall. And then on this firewall, it's going to be learning routes from Express Route, and it will fire it down the red Express Route circuit. And on this Azure Firewall here, we've left it default configuration, which is it will snat if the destination is a public IP. Now, normally we're used to traffic being snatted to a PIP on the outside of the firewall when it goes to the internet, but Azure Firewall will also snat to an internal IP. And I'll show you what that looks like uh, later. So the end-to-end -end flow here is a VM, UDR to internal firewall, UDR to external firewall, uh, gateway learn route via express route to the third party. When the third party gets the traffic, they will be responding to an IP address on Azure Firewall because it's been snattered. Therefore, there'll be end-to-end -end reachability here from the third party via the express route circuit, via the MSEs in the edge network, into the gateway and back to the firewall, which will unravel the snat. But now we've explained the diagram, let's just check the portal and do some confirmation. Okay, so this is my internal VM the 10.167 VM here. We can see it's got a UDR 
pointing the public IP to the next top of 10.157.10.4, which is my Azure Firewall. My Azure Firewall's got a rule that just basically allows all traffic going anywhere at the moment. In that Azure Firewall subnet, which we can have a look at, there's simply a route here, 123.4 slash 32, pointing to 10.10.10.4. So that goes across the peer into the other Azure Firewall. The other Azure Firewall's again got a route that just says allow any anywhere. This is an SSH session on the internal VM. You can see the IP address there. If I curl my public IP, we see we get back. This is a 3P site, and that's because I'm simulating the other end there with a web server. I've got Wireshark running here. We'll look at that in a second. You see on my web server, I'm just running IIS. I've got a simple web site set up. And if we inspect Wireshark, and filter for our Azure Firewall subnet in the Red Hub, we can see traffic coming from 10.10.10.7. So traffic's coming across there, this firewall to this firewall, this firewall snat in, and this firewall snat into one of the IP addresses in its in its range. So this firewall's in a subnet with 10.10.10.0 10, 10, slash 24. And behind the scenes, the Azure Firewall nodes get allocated IPs. So this is this is snapped on Azure Firewall to an internal node private IP rather than to a PIP. And because of that, the web server responds to that. And we've got end-to-end -end layer three reachability in a scenario where you wouldn't normally expect to have it. So anyway, a useful workaround for a semi-common scenario, especially within industries like finance.